Craig Matsumoto, Editor-in-Chief with Light Reading, and we're in Santa Clara, California today talking with Cloud Passage. I've got Amit Gupta here with me. Amit, thanks for taking some time. Of course, thank you. So Cloud Passage, you're all about securing workloads in the cloud. Tell me a little bit more about what that really means. Yeah, so Cloud Passage is essentially a cloud workload security solution, mm -hmm. and we largely work with large enterprises. So as they think about moving their applications, their workloads into a modern infrastructure, into public cloud, private cloud infrastructure, they're looking for a security solution that essentially provides security on their workloads, meets their compliance requirements and so on. And these applications, they are rather uh, more modern architectures and they're, they are essentially being changed fast and being deployed in an automated fashion. So they need a security solution that essentially provides that automation of security and compliance needs across their application footprint. So that's primarily what we do. Okay, and in fact, the nature of workloads is changing inherently, right? You, are you seeing that with your customers? Absolutely, so when we look at how the applications were built five years ago, they were largely being built as a big monolith application and they're packaged inside one or two big set of large libraries and often deployed maybe once in a six months, once in a year kind of models. Now you fast forward to how applications are built and deployed today, these are more microservices based architectures. What that means is that they're essentially small components, they're coupled around loosely defined API contracts and they're changing fast. So they're, they're deployed um, sometimes once in a day, uh, often in weeks. Uh, and so from that perspective, if you think about security of these applications, it's not enough to just secure your virtual machines that are packaging these applications now because this application architecture is more heterogeneous, which is some components would be running inside virtual machines, some components, some stateless components are running inside containers. And then obviously in these applications, they're, they're assembled together with various different cloud services. So you also are consuming application middleware services, cloud services as part of the application. So when security architects, they think about securing this entire application and getting a compliance assessment across it, they have to think about a security architecture and strategy that includes your virtual machines, your containers, your cloud services, and a unified way to look at all of those things. And that's fundamentally the driver around our product strategy and our vision on how we are executing uh, around security and compliance for these applications. Okay, interesting. I'd like to drill down a little more on the container part of that, that whole VM container mixture. What, what can you do for container security? Yeah, so that's actually a very recent change. And if, uh, if I share with you some of the trends that we are seeing in the market, mm -hmm. a year ago, most of the customers and most of the users we were talking to were kind of playing around with the containers and kind of designing new applications, they could new cloud native applications. Uh, and uh, but they didn't really have any meaningful workloads running in production that are in container form factor. Well, fast forward now, uh, things have changed significantly. We have seen a very accelerated adoption among our users on how these applications are deployed in production in a containerized form factor. In fact, there are some users who actually have put a policy that nothing new will go into production when you, uh, unless it is containerized. Now. In terms of security for containers, I actually inherently believe that this is a better architecture for applications and fundamentally something that could be stronger from a security perspective if you keep some of the basic models and hygiene around uh, the pipeline, how you're deploying these applications. So uh, Cloud Passage provides a very uh, prescriptive model around how you should think about container security, how you should think about securing your CI CD pipeline, your continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline for your applications. So the first aspect of container security that we recommend for our users is you have to secure your underlying host operating system where you're running those containers. Oh, of course. You've yeah. got to keep the hygiene on the underlying host, which is often, quite frankly, overlooked because 
folks think that, hey, I'm running these containers, so as long as I got security around my containers, that's good enough. Well, not really. Containers are running on a shared operating system. You've got to do everything you do for your host uh, for your containerized application right. as you, well. You compromise that host. You compromise all the containers you all have, at once. Yes. Yeah. You have that attack surface. That's actually uh, the entire host operating system as well. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is making sure any content that you're building and deploying through this container pipeline is secure. Now, in this case, that's usually your container images. The images that package your code and the necessary dependencies, this should be checked for any kind of known vulnerabilities, uh, configuration um, hardening standards, and so on. Okay. Yeah. The third aspect is, because containers are deployed in an automated fashion, your orchestration framework like Kubernetes, Mesos, or whatever uh, developers might be using, you have to make sure that the definition of the application, the service that you're deploying in a containerized form factor is actually uh, in a secure compliance framework. So there, there's many uh, best practices around it, but fundamentally you want to make sure that thou shall not deploy your containers in a privileged mode, for an example. So you run your containers in a very specific configuration. The, the fourth aspect of container security that we highly recommend is that at all times our security architects and practitioners should have a very crisp visibility across that entire infrastructure. That includes your images, your host, your containers, and the associated pipeline. So what it ensures is that if you get a new vulnerability that is announced, you want to make sure that you have full visibility across that application footprint, what is impacted, what is not impacted, and so on. And the last but not the least is essentially making sure all of these security aspects that we talked about have to be integrated as part of your DevOps pipeline, your tool chain. Developers don't like to change their tools and their processes because security teams want to implement a certain security workflow. Uh, as a result, if security teams want to be successful in terms of implementing a secure pipeline, they have to do it as part of their development tool process. And it's important that the architecture actually integrates with the development tools. So those are the five okay. key areas we talk about that if you as a security architect have implemented that process, you would have a fairly good uh, pipeline that is deploying your containerized applications, giving you full visibility across your infrastructure and give you the ability to uh, remediate or act when you need to based on any violations. Okay, and you know, it's, it seems with containers, because they blink into existence yes. sort of sporadically, this is a chance to make the application secure by design, but to be able to get that security, like you said, into the CICD pipeline and just make it inherently part of the application. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Amit, thanks again for taking the time. Absolutely.